Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Today I want to talk to you about adaptive joins. It's a new join technology um, introduced in the Azure SQL Database and um, uh, SQL Server 2017. And um, it's pretty cool. Um, basically the way it works is instead of simply picking a set of statistics to um, identify a join type of, uh, you know, loops join or hash join, um, instead when you're dealing currently uh, with a column store index and you're doing joins, you can get an adaptive join. Um, now an adaptive join is going to look at the statistics um, on, on the tables that you're joining um, and then it will put a row target in and based on that row target it will either go to a hash join or it will go to a loops join. And the way it, the way basically the way it works is, is it will initially create a hash table, and that's how it figures out how many rows it has. And then based on that number of rows, it will then continue with a hash join. Or if it says, "Hey, look, there's very few rows here," I'll throw away the hash join, even though I, you know it's a little extra work to have collected that. But I'll go with the loops join, which will be more efficient for a smaller set of rows. Pretty cool stuff. Let's see it in action. Okay, so this is my management studio on my test machine. Um, I'm running these tests inside of AdventureWorks 2017. You guys can uh, simulate them yourselves. If we go over to the left, we notice that I've got two new tables, big product and big transaction history. Now, these are from uh, Mechan Adam Mechanics um, Big Adventure script. Um, I'll put a link to that down below in the um, description of the, of the video here so you guys can uh, simulate this yourselves. Now, let's go back over here to the script. Now, what I've done is, is I've added one row uh, to the um, data set with the value 9726. And so now here's our real script, the thing that we really care about. Let's highlight this and take a look at it. Now we're just doing some simple aggregates, joining on the tables, and then filtering based on quantity. Um, one of them is filtering, um, it's going to return a single row. One of them is going to return more than a single row. Um, let's capture the execution plans and see what's happened. Now we're going to capture actual plans and I'll tell you why in just a second. So we take a look at the plans that were captured. To all intents and purposes these look like identical plans, right? The um, estimated um, uh, operator costs are exactly the same across both of them. Um, there's no real big differences except the size of the pipes, which we'll get to in a second. But basically, these plans are identical. And in fact, they really are identical um, as estimated plans. The actual plans are different. Now, the estimated plans are going to be exactly the same because the optimizers make a choice to do an at adaptive join. Now, how does the adaptive join work? Well, Let's go over here and look at the properties on the adaptive join itself. The real key is the adaptive threshold rows. Now in this case it's 2100.27. Now that value is the value that, you know, above that we will use a hash join, below that we use the loops join. And so that's our driver for how things are working. So the plan is always the plan, you're right? That it's always going to be the same, but the use of it, the processing of the data is going to be different. Now let's go back over here and look at the plan itself. Now this top operator here, that is the hash join path. So if it's more than 2100 rows, it would be doing a clustered index scan. And then this bottom um, input is the loops uh, data flow. And so in this case, if it was doing a loops, it would do a clustered index seek. And we wouldn't be able to tell which of these it was doing on an estimated plan. We can only tell on an actual plan. So let's take a look at the properties for the clustered index scan. And we see that the number of executions is zero and the number of rows is zero. Therefore, this path was not taken during the execution. Whereas if we take a look at that clustered index seek, we see that the number of executions is one and the number of rows returned is one. Therefore, this path was actually taken. Conversely, if we look down here where all the big fat pipes are, um, we can see that we're moving a lot more data. In this case, you know, 312,000 rows. It's doing an initial um, breakdown of that to 25,200. Um, that's great, you know, and it's doing the aggregations and stuff. That's cool. But which of these two paths did it take? Well, in this case, this one was executed once. 
it returned 25,200 rows. This one was executed not at all, and it returned zero rows. And so we can see through the actual plan which of the two paths the adaptive join chose to take based on the row values, um, based on that adaptive threshold row value count. Um, that's our driver for which of these two paths it chooses. Um, and pretty much that's it. The adaptive join is fairly easy to understand. Currently, it's only working on column store indexes. Um, my understanding is, is that's probably going to change in the future. We will see that in other places, and that's pretty cool. Um, anyway, you get the idea. That's an adaptive join. All right. So now you've seen how the adaptive join works, and you can see how you can see it inside of an execution plan and, and you know get a basic understanding of what's going on. Um, if you have any questions, put them down below. I'll be happy to try to answer them. Um, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.